Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Invisible Differences, a story of Asperger's, adulting, and living a life in full color. Story by Julie Dashes, adaption, illustration, and colors by Mademoiselle Caroline, and inspired by and in collaboration with Fabiana Vazlet. This book was originally published in French back in 2016. It was translated by Edward Galvin and published by Oni Press in 2021. Invisible Differences is marked as biography by my library and on Goodreads is categorized as memoir and nonfiction. This translation was also nominated for an Eisner Award. As I have already noted a couple of times, I would like to point out that the man who this diagnosis was named after has turned out to be an It's also been removed from the DSM but that's probably more of an American thing. Content notes for adult diagnosis that happens halfway through the book, gaslighting, ableism, sexual harassment and assault, romantic breakup, intrusive thoughts, as well as positive representation of Franz Asperger, puzzle piece metaphors, and ABA. TLDR, I wish I hadn't picked up this book. The name did give me pause, but it felt like it kept popping up in various places, and so I figured I might as well. And now here we are. On to the creator bios. Quote, Julie Dashes is a writer, author of La Difference Invisible. She is a blogger, a YouTuber, a teacher, a researcher, a speaker, and an activist. She loves to play tennis and eat chocolate, not necessarily in that order. Julie writes at home, surrounded by her two dogs and her cat, Misty, who loves to take part in the writing process by lying on the keyboard. Mademoiselle Caroline was born in Paris a few years back. She's the author of several humorous and autobiographical albums, one of which is a story about living with depression that has attra attracted the attention of the media and readers, end quote. And while I didn't get a bio, I'm including Fabiana Vasslet's thank yous as they are enlightening about how this book came to be. Quote, a thank you from the bottom of my heart to Julie, who, even though she didn't know me, agreed right away to my idea, very vague at the time, of telling her life story in comic form. End quote. Because otherwise, by the end of the book, I was more than a little confused by all the nonfiction labels this book had. It is based loosely enough that the copyright page does say that all characters are fictional. But yeah, clarifying. Keywords that came to mind reading this book are self-discovery, boundaries, toxic work culture, and following your bliss. The synopsis posted over on Goodreads says, quote, Marguerite feels awkward, struggling every day to stay productive at work and keep up appearances with friends. She's sensitive, irritable at times. She makes her environment a fluffy, comforting cocoon, alienating her boyfriend. The everyday noise and stimuli assault her senses the constant chatter of her co-workers working her last nerve. Then, when one big fight with her boyfriend finds her frustrated and dejected, Marguerite finally investigates the root of her discomfort. After a journey of tough conversations with her loved ones, doctors, and the internet, she discovers that she has Asperger's. Her life is profoundly changed for the better. End quote. Some of the things that the book does well, and perhaps sometimes too well, is depicting the trauma of being an autistic woman who is only diagnosed late in life. At least this seems to be the case considering my TikTok for you page and IRL relationships. I say too successful because that did render the first half of the book extremely hard to read and kind of like metaphorical nails scraping across a chalkboard. That said, after Marguerite receives her diagnosis, it is nice to watch her come into her own and create a much happier life for herself. The art reminded me a bit of another French comic, Betty's Boob, and the color palette was very expressive of the kinds of moods Marguerite is going through throughout the book. The writing felt a bit didactic and public service announcey. Race was completely ignored and, and sexuality slash gender are binary and heterosexual. Class felt ignored, but maybe the safety net there is enough that I'm creating issues that realistically wouldn't be there. In total, finishing the story, I felt like maybe I would rate this book 3 out of 5 stars. Not the funnest read, but important and coming from a good place. Asterix. Obviously I'm not an expert, and I can be a bit optimistic slash forgiving when it isn't called for. Then you get to the final pages. I might be completely off base, but I believe the revelations about Asperger being a n who was practicing a eugenics against autistic people rather than saving them came to light since 2016. That said, 
I feel like some note should have been made when the work was translated so as to not just have a super glowing write-up about the man who sent a bunch of autistic children to their deaths in the back of a book about a woman finding herself after being diagnosed with autism. And even before that, in profiling how bad France's treatment of autistic people is, the writer of this section wishes that her country was like others that offer, quote, special care using time-tested methods, parentheses, ABA, or applied behavioral analysis, end quote. Which, again, based off my, albeit English language, TikTok for you page and IRL relationships, is an extremely abusive and traumatizing practice that tries to remove autistic traits for the comfort and convenience of not autistic people. Obviously, autistic people are not a monolith, and sometimes we wish for not really great things, like Americans wishing for Canadian health care, although that is at least in the right direction, even if we also need to include dental care, pharmacare, but, and better mental health supports, as well as long-term care for our entire aging population. The creators of this comic and I are also probably separated by a pretty large language barrier, and I'm not sure if they are still advocating for this sort of thing, but it's still not a great thing to include in a book published in English in 2021. Because of some of these unknowns and the parts of the story that felt, that still felt decent, I am currently sticking to a two-star rating. Bye, y'all. Keep reading and organize to end capitalist oppression. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.